for giving me the opportunity to talk today about Reactome. Uh, so we're a reaction-centered pathway database focusing on uh, human events, very much like KEG and Wiki Pathways. Uh, we do annotate some disease counterparts of our normal pathways, and we integrate a variety of different data from our other resources so that we can provide tools for users to browse, query the database, and to efficiently analyze and visualize experimental data sets. Most of our data is open access, open source. I'll talk a little bit about open graphics as well. Recently, we've created a Wikidata uh, export, so it's actually CC0 as well. This is, I appreciate the efforts and help from Alex Pico and others. And we export a lot of data in a variety of different open data standards. I'll talk a bit more about that in a moment. Um, with our quarterly uh, update, we add new proteins, reactions, and pathways, which not only are available through the website, but also through programmatic access and in a variety of different files to download. On that note, we've updated our protein-protein interaction files to include additional annotations, and our SBML data is now supporting level three version one with a richer annotation syntax. Um, now, previously, we've had these kind of ugly green boxes at the top of our event hierarchies representing individual sub-pathways, and we've replaced them with these uh, more interactive, more attractive textbook-style illustrations, uh, consistent <clears throat> with you know the, te the biology textbooks that you're used to. Um, it has a consistent iconography. We reuse the glyphs. It's more amenable to community annotation. Um, and we've created a library of these uh, graphical uh, um, uh, elements in uh, SVG format. Uh, and we're in the process of uh, linking these illustrations, sorry, these glyphs to a variety of ontologies to make it more amenable to functional annotation. Um, now, the Pathway Browser uh, is our kind of go-to for data visualization analysis uh, and also is available to users programmatically to access. Um, the analysis service that we provide that uses the Pathway Browser, we've been performing somewhere in the order of about 700,000 individual analyses over the last year. Um, we've always provided interaction overlays, but recently we've included interaction data directly into the graph data that supports the, the Pathway Browser. This allows us to, uh, for faster loading of visualizations and makes that data more searchable uh, with our in-diagram search features. Um, we've also been updating the way in which users can download these, uh, these diagrams um, as image files, so we can now export them as SVG, PGN, PG, uh, JPEG, and GIF, as well as through Microsoft PowerPoint, uh, so in the PPTX format, which actually is more amenable to some biologists, uh, maybe not to necessarily to bioinformaticians. Um, or users of Cytoscape. Um, and finally, um, we've also providing um, ways in which users can download summary views of their analysis. Uh, so this will be released uh, in the next few weeks. So now to the second part of my talk, which is going to talk about the React Home FI Viz app. Uh, so to assist researchers performing pathway perturbation analysis based upon multiple OMWX data, uh, we've implemented two pathway um, mathematical modeling approaches, one based on pro probabilistic graph models, and the second using a Boolean network model. Guan Ming Wu, who's going to be talking after me, will talk about the latter. Now, <clears throat> uh, for the PGM pathway modeling approach, we've adapted the paradigm approach developed by Vasky, uh, where reactum pathways are converted into factor graphs. So just on the left here, we're just an example of uh, an event from reactum, the P53 apoptosis pathway. And on the right, uh, it's converted into a factor graph. A single protein is converted into four nodes. And a corresponding with each of these nodes is a data set. And we can integrate that data into the model. <clears throat> so just as an example here, uh, we have a simple uh, gene expression regulatory pathway, CTGF and NPPA. Uh, these are two transcription factors that regulate cell proliferation. So the expression of these two proteins are controlled by the upstream proteins YAP1, let me see if the pointer works here. That's great. YAP1, WTR, sorry, WWTR1, and RUNX2. So by converting the reactome pathway into a factor graph, sorry, into a PGM, we can answer questions like uh, if uh, YAP1 copy number is higher, is CTGF up, upregulated? Or <clears throat> if uh, NPPA1 activity is higher, is that, connect, is that correlated in any way with the upregulation of WTR1? W, sorry, WWTR1. 
So <clears throat> in this example, um, we've got copy number variation and mRNA expression data from ovarian, cam ovarian cancer samples. And these are integrated into the converted vector graph. So the panel on the left allows users to view the causes of the impact on the pathway entities. And on the right table, we're seeing the observed copy number variation and the mRNA expression values. Great. So the first sample, um, we can maybe just see here, um, there's lower expression of NPPA1 than in the second sample here. And this is possibly connecting to the, the relationship that WTR1 is, the copy number variation is, is higher here as in here. And we can see in the observed value is two versus one. So just to summarize, um, the Reactum website, the Reactum FI Viz app, provide very useful tools for data visualization and analysis. Uh, here I'm just providing some links to some of those resources uh, that I've talked about today. And also I'd just like to take this opportunity to thank all of the, the curators, the developers, and the PIs in the project that make the Reactum project uh, such a valuable resource. Thank you. Okay, for our next speaker, Guanming Wu from Oregon Health and Science Universities, talking about visualization of cancer target tome in the context of pathways and networks. <laughs> 